As we begin this morning, uh, we're on uh, lesson six of this Great Commission training uh, using our Long Cider book. And um, I wanted to begin with this quote from the author uh, that uh, kind of introduces this subject this morning, where he says, Along siders know how to go deep with people, creating relationships of trust that give room for the Holy Spirit to work. If you remember last week, we talked about the idea that we have to be transparent uh, and vulnerable to people in order to develop that relationship. And here we're going to be talking about communication and taking our communication and our relationships with other people from a cliche or a surface level to a, a level where we can really have real communication both spiritually and, and in a relationship with someone. And so he says that uh, alongsiders know how to go deep, creating those relationships, and that relationship gives room for the Holy Spirit to work. And so that happens, or that begins, when we listen. Alongsiders go deep through listening. James chapter 1 and verse 19 says this, So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath or anger. So we are to be quick to hear and slow to speak. Um, I, maybe your parents or a teacher when you were in school uh, did, did you ever hear that someone say, well, you have two ears and one mouth, and you're supposed to listen twice as much as you speak? Um, anybody ever heard that? Just me. Okay. Uh, a couple of you. And think about, maybe you've done this before, but I think about sometimes how poor of a listener I am. Um, it 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 can manifest itself. It manifests itself in, with me in a couple of ways. One, when I meet someone, I really have to work to when I meet someone to get their name. You, I'm a pastor. I should want to do that, and I do want to do that, but invariably, I'm thinking about, when I meet someone, I'm thinking about what I'm going to say, or I'm thinking about, you know, what's wrong with their hair, or what, I don't know. But something besides, and you know, someone will come up and say, hey, I'm John, and I'll be like, hey, John, I'm Daryl. And then I'll turn around, and it's like, that guy's name could be Pablo for all I know. I don't have any idea. I don't have any idea what, their, what, what that person's name is. Well, that's because I'm not listening. I'm not listening to what that person says. Or you're in a conversation with someone, and you spend all your time formulating what you're going to say next instead of listening to what that person has to say. Now, I'm a talker. I, I know that's shocking to you guys. But I like to talk. I like to tell stories. I, I mean, you know, I can carry on a conversation with a rock for quite a while. But that's not always good. Because just because more people hear my stories doesn't necessarily mean I've communicated with anybody. And so we need to learn how to be good listeners. And we need to, we need to develop that skill. And James, it's, it's biblical. We're, gonna, we're just going to look at a few verses this morning here at the beginning and then kind of talk about uh, some practical steps today, and I, I hope you'll find this helpful. But we need to understand that when I say we need to be good listeners, that's not just cliche. That's what the Bible tells us to do. We need to be quick to listen and slow to speak. Uh, Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 13 says, He who answers a matter before he hears it, it is folly and shame to him. He who answers a matter before he hears it. I, you know, that doesn't really have any application in today's world, does it? Like where we had people preparing to protest for a verdict that hadn't come in yet. I mean, people were mad about the George Zimmerman uh, trial, the, the killing of Trayvon Martin, 
before there had even been a decision on both sides. And everybody, I, I'll just, I'm gonna, I'll be honest with you this morning. I've listened and watched, re- or read very little about that trial, and I didn't watch any of it. You know what? I don't really have a strong opinion. I don't know anything. But that doesn't stop a lot of people from having a strong opinion. Right? We live in a world where we answer stuff we don't know about all the time. And I'm not just, I use that as a national example. I don't want to make a political statement about it. But what I do want to say is, that's how we do even on a personal level. You know, you ever, you ever started a conversation with somebody and they came back with their opinion and, and maybe a story re- and it didn't relate to what you were talking about at all? You know, you were like, man, I went to the ice cream store and you were going to tell about, I don't know, something that happened outside of that. And they're like, ice cream, da 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 you know, and you're like, that's not even what I was going to talk about. Why? Because we answer a matter before we even we, we, we hear it. And so again, we need, to, we, need to, we need to listen. And then Proverbs 25 and verse 12 says, like an, uh, like an earring of gold and an ornament of fine gold, a wise rebuker to, to an obedient ear. In other words, not only do we need to listen to what other people say, but we need to listen when, when God, through other people, speak into our lives. We need to look for how to apply rebuke and correction in our own life. That's a difficult thing, is it not? To think about how we can be better, how we can receive correction and rebuke. So we need to listen, and the the bulk of this is the idea that we are in a discipleship relationship and and we want to listen to other people. But there's also the idea that we need to listen to rebuke from from other people and be god will use other people and sometimes uh not even even unwittingly where someone will just say something not necessarily at you but god is speaking to you through them we need to we need to be aware of that and that comes from having a listening spirit so i want to encourage you on page 58 um, of the book uh, there is a, a listening habits exercise and I would encourage you just to read through that, to go through that, um, and kind of picture yourself in different conversations, and how do you relate uh, to, to some of these things. And again, uh, I'm not always as good a listener as I should be. One of the things, uh, my wife and I have a lot of conversations, and my wife is naturally quiet, and I am naturally... Um, uh, uh, slightly more outgoing. And um, so that, that's probably why we are together. But invariably, my wife will start a sentence, and I'll just interrupt her in the course of a conversation. And it turns out she doesn't always appreciate that. Um, it's taken about 20 years for that to come out. But, you know, that's an area right now that I'm really working on, is when I'm having a conversation with my wife, really waiting for her to get all of her thoughts out because she doesn't speak a lot and I want to hear what she has to say. I want to be a better listener to her. I want to have a better relationship with her. Well, the same thing is true not just in a marriage relationship but in all of our relationships. At, at work, in our, in our spiritual relationships, in a discipling situation, we need to be good listeners. And so it's an important um, skill for us to develop, and, and we can improve on that. And then number two, alongsiders go deep one step at a time. And I wanted to spend some time this morning uh, talking about, uh, these are on page 60 and 61 in your book, but the different levels of, uh, the different levels of communication, uh, of conversation. And num- level number one is that cliche conversation. Um, that cliche conversation. Do you ever, um, you ever have the same conversation with people over and over? You know, maybe 
Uh, maybe you stop in at a certain place to buy coffee or to do something, or, or maybe it's a person that you only have peripheral relationship at work, but maybe the only thing you talk about is a sporting event or the weather or, you know, you find out one thing about them or they find out one thing about you and that's, that's the only conversation you ever have. It's just cliche. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Some of you guys are looking at me like, what? I'm deep with everybody, man. Um, okay. But, you know, you're just like, hey, how's it going? Crazy weather, huh? Yep, it's crazy. Well, it's always crazy. We live in Colorado, right? I mean, that doesn't need to be said. Hey, it rained last night. Really? Yeah, it was a bad one. Uh, but we can have that, and we can, it can be cliche, and we can never go any deeper. You know a place where that happens all of the time? Church. Church. Think about it. Most of you, as I look around, most of you are sitting where you normally sit. <laughs> Some of you are like, that's right. This is my. Yeah, this is summertime, right? We have the same chair there, so you kind of get it. And, you know, normally we kind of mix them up, but this, you, you get it, you get it form-fitted. But so consequently, the people around you are, are probably pretty similar too. And maybe, maybe every week you go, hey, it's great to see you. Hey, I'm glad to see you. I'm glad you're here today. God bless you. Or maybe you know, you know, how's the family? How are those kids? Or, or how's your wife? Or whatever. But if you go to church for six months and you have that same conversation with those same people over and over, we're only at the surface. You see what I'm saying? See, a lot of times you'll read surveys about people coming to church. People will come to church and they'll say, man, I like the music. Well, the preaching's not too bad. They might even say, man, that church, they're real friendly. I mean, people smile. They shake your hand. They learn your name. But if you never go any deeper, then it's only cliche. That's great. That's enough the first time you come to church, right? But not after a couple of months. You don't just want, hey, how's it going? What's your name? Good to see you. It needs to be more than that. And so we want to take that to a different level. Level number two, reporting information. This level just gives little insight into our thoughts, our feelings, our opinions. It's just information, you know. And this especially could happen at work, but, you know, any kind of conversation where you're like, you're just giving information. You're just sharing something that's going on. But we want to take that to a, a different level. Level number three, ideas, judgments, values. And remember we talked about the idea of transparency. Or, yeah, of transparency. Uh, on page 660, uh, it gives some examples here of level three communication. Uh, I don't think pop music is as good as it was in, in the 1960s. The, someone has that idea, judgment, or value. Um, I can't speak to that. I wasn't around, but I have, <laughs> I, said, I have some hesitancy about voting for this political candidate. I could not support that store moving into our community. I find Pastor Darrell's sermons to be lacking in imagination. No. <laughs> I wish my wife would wear that color more often. So we have here the ideas where you are giving your opinion. We're, we're taking the level of communication a little bit deeper. You're saying, look, this is, this is my opinion on this or that, or you're making a judgment there. And that's the idea of transparency. You're beginning to open up. See, if you just say, you know, um, this is who sings this song, you're just giving information. But if you're like, man, I really like that song, well, then... Now you're telling a little bit about yourself. And, and that begins 
to open up that dialogue, right? And, but a lot of times we're afraid to do that. We're afraid to give our opinion about anything. Because we don't want to get blasted. You know, we, we, we just want to kind of go along and get along. And then level four, feelings and emotions. And this is really that idea of vulnerability. So the an, an, examples here. I'm deeply offended by the lyrics in most pop music today. I fear that the values of this candidate will destroy our country. I think it's a crime how some companies underpay their employees. Pastor Darrell puts me to sleep when he preaches. My wife is really sexy when she wears that color. So, uh, I know, we just use the word sexy in church. Um, but uh, between a man and a wife, there's biblical precedence for that. But again, vulnerability, right? I mean, at that point, we're really, we're expressing how we feel, why we feel it. And in that, we're vulnerable. I mean, if, if we say, you know, I really hate uh, this kind of music. Well, someone else can go, really? I love it. Oh, well, sh- now we have a disagreement. But if I'm just like, hey, good to see you, there's no, there's no deeper communication. But we express our feelings, we express our emotions, and that's vulnerability. And then level number five, peak communication. And listen to the characteristics about peak communication. I honestly admit my failures. I ask God and others for help. I'm free to share this gut level response because I know that I will not be judged by my friend. We easily slip into peak communication even when we have been absent from one another for for some time. I was thinking about that. Do you have a friend who whenever you get together, in just a course of a few minutes, you can have a very deep level of communication or conversation with them? If you do, that's probably born out of shared experiences, right? I mean, that's probably because you've gone through some things with that person, and because of that, you know them at a very deep level. And so it doesn't take very long to get to that level. Even if you don't communicate a lot, um, or even on, on a necessarily on a regular basis in another way. You know, I, I personally, I find I don't have a lot of those conversations on the phone. Those conversations for me come mostly face to face. So I have some friends that don't live locally that maybe I'll just kind of keep up with peripherally. But if we're together for just even an hour or two, we can have a pretty deep conversation. Because we have a shared experience. We, we know each other. But we should seek to develop that, com- that, that type of a relationship with other people. And I think this, or I know this, the older we get, the more difficult that can be. Because for a lot of us, we think... I've got friends, man. You know, I, I've, I've done things. I've shared things with other people. And so to let new people into that level, that circle, that, that level of communication becomes more difficult. But as Christians, as we seek to have a relationship with other people and to have spiritual influence in their lives, we need to try and develop that. Now, understand this morning that we, this is not something that just happens. I'm not saying this this morning, if Jason says, hey, uh, go around and shake one another's hands, you go up and share your deepest, darkest secret, you know? Um, You readily admit your fault to some stranger. That's not what I'm talking about. But, you know, that's just creepy, right? But you should seek... To have relationships with people and seek to have those relationships go deeper. As we've gone through this series, I've kind of been thinking about that. Even for myself, friendships that I have and people that I have identified as being um, godly men and women, spiritual people that I want to know more. And, and, and I want to make an effort to 
to know them more so that, so that I can benefit from, from a relationship with them. Not to use them, but just to have a, a deeper relationship. And then people that I, that I believe that God would lead to me that I can be an influence to. And I want to try to deepen that relationship. And so sometimes you have to be intentional about that. And again, not in a creepy way, but it comes through shared experiences. And it comes through spending time with people and spending time with them uh, in, in a, a deeper communication. Um, I feel the last kind of um, uh, idea related to peak communication is that we feel confident that what we share is shared in confidence. You know, there are certain, uh, for most people, we want to put the best foot forward, don't we? I mean, and, and think about when we come to church, right? We want to try to dress nicely, appropriately. We want to try to look presentable, right? Isn't that, uh, that's a, a, a phrase that we use. We want to look presentable. Why? Because we want to present. We want to put the best foot forward. We want to, we, we want to act like, you know, we don't want to show off our warts. But the more we know somebody, the deeper our relationship with someone they know our good and our bad, and they're accepting of both. Not that they want you to be bad, but they're accepting of both. Think about it in a dating relationship. Remember, for some of you, you're going to have to think back, but uh, for others, it might have been last night. But, you know, you have that first date. You know the first date with someone? Well, the first date, it's... It's all about presentation, right? I mean, you want to, you want to, you're worried about what you wear. You want to make sure you smell okay. Uh, when you go to eat, you know, you've, you're, you're trying to use all the silverware. You know, cut your food extra small. Uh, you know, you just, you want to make sure. Some of you guys know what I'm talking about. You want to make sure that you're making a good impression. Then you date someone for a while, you know. Maybe you get married. Silverware strictly optional, you know. Uh, as are, you know, close it when you eat, whatever, I don't know. But, you know, it just, it, it changes, does it not? I mean, you start to see all the warts of that person. But, and not that you shouldn't try to be presentable to your boyfriend or girlfriend or spouse or whatever, but... In that, the good and the bad is accepted. You have some security with that person that they, that they care for you and appreciate you both in the good and bad. And so you, you, we tend to be more ourselves. And then that can be good or bad depending on the situation, but it's a deeper level of a communication, a deeper level of relationship. And so we want to seek to, to, to develop that. So, as we prepare to close this morning, just a, a little bit of feedback. What hinders peak communication? What hinders that? What? Selfishness? How so? Because we're not listening? I'm interrupting you. What? What were you going to say? How so? Okay. Fear. Yep. I think those two things are probably the, the, the top answers that I think of. Selfishness. We don't take the time. And then fear. What if, I, what if I share my opinions, my emotions, my real thoughts with people, and they go, that's stupid. Or that doesn't have any value to me. Or whatever. That... It, fear. So I think that's, that's a big one. Um, what encourages peak communication? Well, here's what I would, sorry, what? Interest? Okay, what? Similar interest? Yeah, that's true. But here's, here's the thing that I would take off of what was said about what hinders. Selfishness and fear. 
if we will provide interest and security, then we can help elicit peak communication from other people. You understand what I'm saying? In other words, if I know that my opinion will not be ridiculed, will not be mocked, and what I say will be held in confidence, then people can trust and not fear to share more. And if people know that I genuinely care about them and have their interests, not just my own interests at heart, they're more likely to share and relate with me. And so we have the opportunity to develop skills on our own, but also to draw other people naturally into that type of a relationship and that type of communication. When we show interest in them, when we show the love of God in them, uh, in, to them, and then when we, help, when we help calm their fears, we show them respect, we show them confidence. We don't turn around and talk about our conversation that we had with one person with someone else. And so we have the ability uh, to bring that out. So on page number um, 62 uh, and 63, it has some, some action steps along with the, uh, the communication or the listening checklist. And so I would encourage you to take those and kind of go through them. Think about how you can be a better listener. How you can be a better communicator with somebody. And who God would have you to attempt to build those relationships to. I was talking with someone the other day, and I want to kind of just close with this idea. But, you know, it's amazing how very small things can make a big impact into the lives of other people. Um, and, and I was given a couple of examples, and I, they're very personal, so I don't necessarily want to share them with you today, but uh, both over the last couple of weeks, I thought about things that people have said to me uh, and that have really spoken as, a, as really like a word from God just for my life. And I'm not sure that they remember necessarily even those things that it had much of an impact to them but what a difference it made. And then also, when, when God has allowed me to do that same thing, when someone will come back and say, this time that you spent or this conversation that we had was so impacting. And sometimes, truthfully, I can't always remember all the details of that. Or, or maybe it, it didn't have as much impact for me, but, but God used that. To be, to be an encouragement or a conviction or a blessing to somebody else. And so we ought to seek to develop our skills as a listener, but to really be uh, cognizant and to be uh, very purposeful in our ideas of deeper communication with one another. Because God desires a deeper relationship with us, and he's commanded us to be a listener. Remember what James said, be quick to hear, be slow to speak. And if we will follow that, then when we are when we do speak, it can be impacting and it can have an it can have a great effect on the lives of other people. Let's pray this morning. God, we thank you so much for your word and the principles of your word, God, that we can apply to our our lives. And God, I pray that you would help us within our church as a body with one another that we would be, we would be uh, uh, deep in our communication with one another, that we would care for one another, that we would respect one another. And through that, God, that we would sharpen one another and, and encourage one another to a deeper relationship with you. But God, I pray that that would not just happen within the church. But Lord, that we would take that outside of these walls and that through our relationships we would share Jesus Christ with people, that we would help them to grow in their faith and their walk with you. Help us to be bearers of the light. You're the light of the world, God, and you've entrusted that light to us.
Help us to take it and to shine it bright into the lives of those we come into contact with. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen.